on Iron News this hour. Less than 24 hours after the abduction of Kagara students, gunmen invade another village in Niger State. A Belarus court has jailed two journalists for filming a rally against the country's leader. The federal government is set to borrow $1.2 billion to facilitate mechanized agriculture in Nigeria. Hello there, thanks for joining us. And now here are news making headlines. I'm Michael Nath. Less than 24 hours after the abduction of students and staff in Kagara, Niger State, some communities in Gamana ward of Shiroro local government area came under heavy attack by gunmen. Sarkin Zama, Barkin Kogi, Siko, and other adjoining villages invaded by the gunmen Wednesday evening. The operation, which lasted four hours, was said to have recorded some casualty. According to reports, some residents who sustained degrees of gunshot injuries were rushed to various hospitals for medical attention. Many Nigerians, including the Senate President Ahmed Lawa, are disturbed over the abduction of students and staff of Government Science College, Kagara, Niger State. The Senate President described the incident as a callous and despicable crime. He urged the security agencies to ensure immediate rescue of the abducted persons and the arrests of the criminals involved. Lawa also appealed to government at all levels to ensure schools are henceforth protected against heartless criminals who have apparently identified them as soft targets. A list released by the State Ministry of Education shows 27 students were abducted alongside five staff and nine members of their families, making a total of 41 persons abducted from the school. Now, meanwhile, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar has cautioned those in authority against granting amnesty to criminal elements. While reacting to the abduction of Kagara students, Atiku condemned the sad development, saying the spate of insecurity in Nigeria is now beyond control. The former vice president argued that the federal government must enforce the laws against abductions and kidnappings by apprehending the criminals, making an example of those convicted to serve as a deterrent to others. He, however, called on the federal government to declare all secondary and primary schools in the affected states and zones as federal protected zones and post armed military personnel at all schools. To boost the ongoing war against insurgency, the new service chiefs on Wednesday promised to improve commitments to troops' welfare and reorientation. The service chiefs comprising the Chief of Defense Staff, Lockheed Hirabo, a Chief of Army Staff, Ibrahim Atahiru, Chief of the Naval Staff, Awal Gambo, and Chief of Air Staff, Ishaka Amau, made this pledge while unveiling their agenda for the armed forces when they appeared before the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee for screening in Abuja. Chief of Defense Staff said he would ensure effective collaboration of the Nigerian armed forces that are capable of fulfilling their constitutional mandate of protecting Nigeria's territorial integrity. But Ahiru, Chief of Army Staff, also promised to ensure the Nigerian army is repositioned to professionally defeat adversaries through an integrated approach that will involve every Nigerian in providing adequate security for the country. Open grazing of cattle is now a taboo in Nigeria's federal capital territory. The FCT administration said it had communicated the directive to the leadership of the Fulani herdsmen in Abuja. The director, Abuja Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. Hassan Abubakar, said the one-month ultimatum issued to the pastoralists had expired adding that the violators would be sanctioned as fools. The decision of FCT authority is coming against a ban on open grazing by the Northern Governors Forum, who described the practice as outdated. Abu Bakr further revealed that the FCT minister, Mohamed Bello, has earmarked five locations for cattle grazing in Abaji, Kwali and Kuje area councils. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has approved the use of AstraZeneca vaccine for use in Nigeria. NABDAC Director General Professor Mujishola Adeyeye on Thursday said Nigeria stands in a better position 
in the ongoing battle against the infection of coronavirus pandemic among the global community. NAVDAC got the dossier of the vaccine a week ago, while its safety committee went to work immediately to evaluate its safety and efficacy for Nigerians, while affirming that the vaccine could be stored in 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. She explained that there were three additional vaccines undergoing evaluation. South Africa on February the 1st received a million doses of Oxford AstraZeneca formula but decided against administering it over the concerns of whether it would protect against a widespread variant. It instead went with the vaccine by Johnson & Johnson as it begs to begin taming the pandemic in Africa's hardest hit nation. Now, foreign news. A Belarus court has jailed two TV journalists for filming a rally against the country's leader, Katrina Adreyeva, 27, and Daria Kosova, 23, jailed for two years, were arrested in a Minsk apartment block in November while live streaming an unauthorized protest. They are with Poland-based Belsat TV. Mass protests took place across Belarus after Alexander Lukashenko claimed victory in a presidential election in August, widely condemned as rigged. Belsat TV rejected the accusation that by broadcasting footage of the demonstration, the two journalists had disrupted press services in the Belarusian capital. Business now. The International Monetary Fund has called for caution the use of cryptocurrency, describing it as a concern. It disclosed this during a virtual briefing on the recently published 2020 Article 4 IMF Staff Report for Nigeria. The resident representative of IMF for Nigeria, Ari Aysan, said the concern on the use of cryptocurrencies was why many central banks were cautioned about the development. ASIN further canvassed uh, the unification of foreign exchange rates in Nigeria so as to make the management of forests more transparent across the country. Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and NPC says it won't hike the ex depot price of premium Noto Spirit PMS in February because it has to wait for conclusion of the stakeholders and labor consultation meeting. It assured the consumers that in spite of the rise in the price of crude oil in the international market, it has ruled out the possibility of any increment in February. The group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Dr. Kenia of Ateru, explained these in a statement. According to him, the decision is to help conclude ongoing engagements with organized labor and other stakeholders on acceptable framework that will not expose the ordinary Nigerian to any hardship. President Mohamed Buhari has approved the appointment of Dr. Oji Obunaya Oji as new Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NEITI. Oji's appointment, which will take effect from Friday, followed the expiration of the term of office of the immediate past Executive Secretary of the organization, Waziri Adil. President Buhari charged the new executive secretary to use his new office to serve Nigeria with diligence and promote honesty and transparency. Oji, who started out his professional career with the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, was until his new appointment the Director of Communications and Advocacy at NEITI. Now, for Lagos State, and by extension Nigeria, to create the desired digital economy, and smart city, there is need to resuscitate the Yabakon Valley, build capacity and infrastructure, and migrate to other states. These are part of the submissions of speakers at a Hiweti Summit 2021 held in Lagos. Yabakon Valley is nicknamed for a high tech innovation hub in the Yaba. The Ehiwiti Summit, designed for businesses and individuals to maximize digital innovation and other business opportunities, came to an end on Thursday. The federal government is set to borrow $1.2 billion from the Dutch Bank and the Development Bank of Brazil to facilitate mechanized agriculture in Nigeria. Senior Special Advisor to the President on Agriculture, Andrew Wasari, told journalists in Abuja the initiative is under the Green Imperative Project. 
According to him, the loan had been insured while the financing is coming from the Dutch Bank and Development Bank of Brazil. Fasari said the loan was structured with a monitoring policy with the Central Bank of Nigeria to allow the lending of the facility to entrepreneurs in Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has mandated commercial banks to open new dollar account with offshore lenders for receiving international monetary transfers. The directive was disclosed by World Remit, an international money transfer operator's IMTO player, to its clients. The new directive on dollar account opening is coming two months after the CBN raised the alarm that its policy mandating IMTOs to pay diaspora remittances beneficiaries in dollars is being flouted. The regulator further directed that all mobile money operators should disable wallets from receipts of funds from IMTOs following suspected abuse of policy guidelines by the IMTOs. And it's a wrap on News Now. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms and our websites for more details. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Michael Nath.